one of the deepest and richest aspects of our faith is the fact that God wants to interact with us. You know, he works in our hearts and through our actions and words to bring about his will, to, to bring his kingdom more into our reality. And one of the most overlooked ways in which this happens in my life, as I'm sure in your life as well, is through prayer. One of the things that I struggle with the most is waiting on God. And so often I, I think that the, the remedy to a situation, what, what's going to bring reconciliation or bring healing to, to this person or that person and, and help their heart, you know, or, or what's going to lead them to repentance is, is this deep, like drawn out, thorough conversation with me. Well, it is a conversation, but not one with me and that person. It's one with me and God or, or them and God. The Spirit of God is active and moving, and so often we try to jump in front of Him, and we think that, you know, driven by our impatience, we're going to hop in and fix the situation at hand. And when we've exhausted all of those options, we've had those hard conversations, and nothing is changing, whether it's a situation or dealing with a person that you're struggling with, then we utter that, that age-old Christian phrase, all we can do now is pray. Karis, will you join me in walking in repentance of this mindset? God never intended prayer to be our last effort. You know, scripture just has a different outlook on it. Prayer is before other actions. It's after other actions. And it's during our other actions. You know, God's people in the Old Testament and, and, and even Jesus and the apostles in the New Testament, they treated prayer as a necessity and it was integral to the walk. It wasn't an add-on. When Samuel is addressing the people, he tells them that God will not forsake them and yet declares that it would be a sin for him to cease praying for them. In 1 Samuel 12, 23, it reads, Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you, and I will instruct you in the good and right way. And so he's saying that God is like taking care of the situation, but it would still be wrong for him to not pray. And we see a similar pattern in Paul's letters. You know, for example, in Colossians 1.9, Paul's response to hearing of the faith of the Colossians is to have incessant prayer. So he rattles on about how great it is that their faith is growing and they're knowing more about Jesus. And he says in 1.9, Colossians 1.9, he says, from the moment we heard, we haven't stopped praying. And not only that, but this example above all should really kind of like correct the way we think about prayer. It's that it was ingrained into the daily life of Jesus Christ when he physically walked the earth. For example, in Luke chapter 11, before he teaches the disciples to pray, they, they say, Lord, will you teach us how to pray? And right before that, it just says, Jesus was praying in a certain place. You know, Jesus, God the Son, communicated with God the Father. And I think that's so much deeper than just like a helpful example. God is working to make us more like Jesus. And so if Jesus, fully God and fully man, made prayer a normal, active part of his daily living, so should it be with us.